Hello, thank you for joining me today. I am Dr. Ricardo Kotlaroff. In this video, we will talk about what macular holes are, as well as their causes, symptoms, diagnosis, and treatment. When people were surveyed regarding the five senses, sight, hearing, smell, touch, and taste, consistent reports were made that eyesight is the mode of perception most valued and which they fear to lose most. Even so, many people do not have a proper understanding of eye anatomy, health problems that affect the eyes, or how vision works. Understanding this will help us learn how a macular hole affects vision and quality of life. The activity of each eye is wonderful. They react and adjust according to the amount of light that enters them at every moment. They react to shape, structure, distance, movement, and color of objects and allow our brains to obtain the information with which we will construct an interpretation and elaboration of the visual reality surrounding us. In many ways, the human eye works like a digital camera. The cornea is primarily concentrated by light, which is the clear front part of the eye that acts like a camera lens. The iris of the eye works like the diaphragm of a camera. It controls the amount of light reaching the back of the eye by adjusting the size of the pupil automatically, like an aperture. The crystalline of the eye lens is directly behind the pupil and further concentrates light. Through a process known as accommodation, this lens aids the eye by concentrating automatically on approaching and nearby objects just like the lens of an autofocus camera. Light concentrated by the crystalline lens and cornea is limited by the pupil and iris, then reaches the retina, the light-sensitive inner lining of the eye's back. Let me explain how the retina and macula with the fovea at its center act. The inner surface of the eyeball is lined by the sensory membrane called the retina. The retina is like the electronic image sensor of a digital camera, which converts optical images into electronic signals. The optic nerve transmits these signals to the visual cortex, the part of the brain which controls our sense of sight. The retina consists of many layers, including one composed of specialized cells known as photoreceptors. There are two known photoreceptor cells in human eyes, cones and rods. Cones are responsible for central vision and color vision, and they perform best in medium and bright light. Rod photoreceptors detect motion, provide black and white vision, and function well in low light. Rods are found throughout the retina, while cones are focused in a small central region of the retina 5.5 millimeters in diameter known as the macula. At the center of the macula is a small depression known as the fovea, which has a 1.5 millimeter diameter. This fovea consists only of cone photoreceptors and is the point in the retina responsible for color vision and maximum visual acuity. Photoreceptor cells take light concentrated by the cornea and lens and convert it into chemical nervous signals and transport it to the visual centers of the brain by way of the optic nerve. In the brain's visual cortex found at the back of the brain, these signals are changed into visual perceptions and images. If any of the structures described are damaged, disease can develop. That's what happens when we have a macular defect or breakage. Because of its central importance in the visual process, the macular hole leads to a loss of our visual capacity. What is a macular hole? A macular hole is a small break in the macula, found in the middle of the eye's light-sensitive tissue known as the retina. This macula gives the bright central vision you need for driving, reading, and seeing clearly. A macular hole can trigger distorted central vision and general unclear vision. As this hole increases, a blind or dark spot appears in your central vision. However, a macular hole does not affect your shallow or side vision. The overall prevalence of macular holes is about 3.3 cases in 1,000 in people older than 55 years. The maximum incidence or number of new cases diagnosed per year is in the seventh decade of life. There is no reported racial predilection, but women are more affected than men. If there is a macular hole in one eye, 
there is a 10 to 15 percent probability a macular hole will develop in your other eye over your lifetime. More than a hundred years ago, idiopathic macular holes were identified as a unique clinical entity. What causes a macular hole? Now that I have explained what a macular hole is, let me help you understand the causes. They can be idiopathic or secondary to diseases. The majority of macular holes are idiopathic, meaning they occur in eyes that have no past ocular pathology. It's typically related to the vitreous aging process. The climax incidence of idiopathic macular hole development is in the seventh decade of life, and women are more affected than men. How does vitreous aging lead to the breakdown of the macula and the formation of an idiopathic macular hole? To understand, we must know what the vitreous is and what happens when we get older. The human eye is divided anatomically into three sections, anterior, posterior, and the vitreous chamber. The vitreous chamber is the largest, occupying 80% of the eye. It is filled with vitreous humor and located in the back of the eye. It aids in maintaining the round shape and the pressure it exerts on the retina keeps it in position. The vitreous humor is a transparent, gelatinous, and colorless mass that occupies the space in the eye between the retina and the lens. It is surrounded by a layer of collagen known as the vitreous membrane, which separates it from the rest of the eye. 99% of the vitreous is water, and the rest is constituted by proteins, collagen, sugars, and salts. This is different from the fluid in the frontal parts of the eye, aqueous humor, which is replaced continually. The gel in the vitreous chamber does not change. The vitreous is gel-like near the edges and fluid-like near the center, and has millions of fine fibers attached to certain areas in the surface of the retina, like the aura serrata, the optic nerve disc, where the retina stops anteriorly, and at the dorsal side of the lens, and the Weiger band. As you age, the vitreous go, like all our body, through chemical and physical alterations and degenerate. As a result, the vitreous begins to slowly shrink, moving away from the surface of the retina. The region where the vitreous has contracted will be filled with natural fluids. This vitreous detachment is not abnormal. It is part of the aging process and in many cases there are no secondary effects. However, in some people, as a result of this vitreous collapse and detachment, cells, blood or other byproducts of inflammation enter the vitreous and remain there unless they are surgically removed. These are called floaters, which are small cobwebs or specks that float about in your field of vision. In some cases, the vitreous pulls away from the surface of the retina, but some of the fibers remain attached to its surface and further shrink, producing physical tangential traction at the macula. If the traction force is strong enough, it triggers a retinal tear or break, creating a macular hole. The fluid that has taken over the shrunken vitreous can then seep through the hole onto the macula, distorting and blurring the central vision. For many years, investigators sought systemic disorders as to why idiopathic macular holes form. Initial studies implicated hypertension, cardiovascular disease, and prior hysterectomy as possible dangers. Nonetheless, no evidence has confirmed these associations. In the eye disease case control study, many potential systemic dangers were scrutinized prospectively. Only elevated serum fibrinogen levels correlated with an increased danger of idiopathic macular hole. Although the precise pathogenesis of an idiopathic macular hole is still speculative, evidence postulates that abnormal tractional forces of the vitreous on the macula are directly responsible. Such tractional forces can be observed clinically with contact lens tests, ultrasonography, and newer imaging techniques such as optical coherence tomography and laser biomicroscopy. The success of vitreous surgery for macular holes gives strong evidence for a direct role of the vitreous in pathogenesis. Now we will explain the second group of causes, the formation of a macular hole secondarily induced by a pathological process. They are trauma, vitreomacular traction syndrome, cystoid macular edema, retinal detachment, epiretinal membrane, 
inadvertent exposure to laser energy, Best's disease, high myopia, coupled with posterior staphyloma, lightning strike injury, hypertensive retinopathy, and proliferative diabetic retinopathy. Trauma. A macular hole can immediately form after a blunt trauma. The initially published description of a macular hole by Herman Knapp in 1869 was of one in a previously traumatized eye. Trauma-related macular holes are suspected to be linked to the transmission of concussive force in a counter coup manner, which leads to the immediate rupture of the macula at its thinnest point. Vitreomacular Traction Syndrome In principle, this process is similar to the age-related collapse and detachment of the posterior vitreous described above. But unlike it, the detachment is incomplete since the vitreous is very attached to the macular surface, pulling and distorting its normal anatomy as it contracts. This is a vision-threatening condition and can trigger signs ranging from lowered and blurry vision to distorted and blacked-out central vision. Cystoid macular edema, also known as CME, is a painless disorder which affects the central macula or retina. When this condition is present, multiple cyst-like or cystoid regions of fluid show in the macula and cause swelling of retina or edema. The loss of vision is due to the damage caused to the photoreceptors by the accumulation of fluid and the thickening of the retina. In the developed world, cystoid macular edema is the leading cause of the loss of central vision. Retinal detachment. Retinal detachment happens when subretinal fluid piles up in the potential space between the neurosensory retina and the underlying retinal pigment epithelium. RPE. Retinal detachments have traditionally been grouped into tractional, regmatogenous, and exudative. In tractional detachments, there are scars on the surface of the retina that contract and, as a consequence, the retina detaches from the retinal pigment epithelium. This is a rare form of retinal detachment. Regmatogenous is coined from the Greek word regma, meaning a break or discontinuity. A regmatogenous retinal detachment, or RRD, happens when a tear in the retina causes fluid accumulation with a separation of the neurosensory retina from the underlying retinal pigment epithelium, or RPE, that is the pigmented cell layer just outside the neurosensory retina nourishing the cell's retinal visual. This is the most common type of retinal detachment. In the exudative type, there are no tears or ruptures of the retina but processes caused by injuries or inflammations lead to the progressive infiltration of fluids in the lower area of the retina, resulting in detachment. Eporetinal membrane. These form in the back of the eye in response to changes in the vitreous humor, or more uncommonly, diabetes. These membranes are formed by a semi-translucent fibrous material that covers the macula in the foveal and parafoveal areas making vision difficult. It is also known as a macular pucker. Inadvertent exposure to laser energy. Best's disease is a genetic disease. They're born with this and have an autosomal dominant inheritance characterized by the subretinal compilation of egg yellowish material in the macular area. It affects both men and women. This normally occurs binocularly in both eyes, but vision may not be equally affected in each eye. At times, it affects only one eye monocularly. Best's disease can begin to trigger changes at the back of the eye between the ages of 3 to 15, although it does not affect your vision until later in life. Best's triggers problems with your central vision, but does not lead to absolute loss of sight and is painless. Best's affects the vision you use when looking directly at something, for instance when you're looking at photos, reading, or watching TV. Best's might make this central vision distorted or blurry, and over a period of time, it may trigger a blank patch in your vision center. Best's does not affect your shallow vision. Best's disease affects only the eyes, so it is not triggered by or linked to a problem or disease in other parts of your body. High myopia coupled with posterior staphyloma. Staphyloma is a protrusion of the sclera or cornea, usually lined with uveal tissue due to inflammation. Posterior staphyloma is a backward protruding of sclera at the posterior pole of the eye. Lightning strike injury. 
hypertensive retinopathy that is at retinal vascular risk triggered by hypertension. Symptoms normally show late in the disease. Fundoscopic examination reveals arteriolar constriction, vascular wall changes, arteriovenous nicking, cotton wool spots, yellow hard exudates, flame-shaped hemorrhages, and optic disc edema. Proliferative diabetic retinopathy, or PDR, is a more advanced form of the disease. At this point, new weak blood vessels grow in the retina and into the vitreous, the gel-like fluid that fills the back of the eye. The new blood vessel may leak blood into the vitreous, clouding the vision. Are there different stages of a macular hole? There are four stages of a macular hole. The progression between the different stages can take weeks to months, though there are cases where it does not progress. Stage 1. Foveal Detachments There is a partial defect in the thickness of the macula with small foveal detachments. Without treatment, half of stage 1 macular holes will progress. Stage 2. Partial Thickness Holes Macular hole of full thickness less than 400 microns in size. Without treatment, about 70% of stage 2 macular holes will progress. Stage 3. Full thickness holes. These holes are larger without vitreous separation of the retina. The hole is larger than 400 microns. Stage 4. There is a complete macular hole in the presence of a complete separation of the vitreous from the optic disc and the macula. The size of the hole and where it's found on the retina determines how it will affect your vision. When a stage 4 macular hole shows up, most central and detailed vision is lost. Signs of a macular hole. These are the signs of a macular hole. Difficulty in detailed tasks like reading. Blurred central vision. Distorted wavy vision. Central blind spot or gray area. The most common sign of macular hole is a slow decline in the central vision of the affected eye. The length to which vision is affected depends on the location and size of the macular hole and the stage of its progress. Macular holes show up slowly over time, so you may not see signs until your vision is affected. In the early stage of a macular hole, people may notice a slight distortion or blurriness in their straight-ahead vision. Straight lines or objects look wavy or bent. Reading and performing other routine tasks with the affected eye becomes hard. Is a macular hole the same as age-related macular degeneration? No. Macular holes and age-related macular degenerations are two different and distinct conditions. Let me emphasize, macular degeneration is a condition that affects the tissues under the retina, while a macular hole requires damage from within the eye at the junction between the vitreous and the retina itself. No relationship exists between the two diseases, although they have similar symptoms. Conventional Treatment Although some macular holes bind themselves and require no treatment, surgery is compulsory in many cases to help improve vision. In this surgical procedure, called a vitrectomy, the vitreous gel is removed to prevent it from pulling on the retina and replaced with a bubble containing a mixture of gas and air. The bubble serves as an internal temporary bandage that binds the edge of the macular hole in place while it heals. Surgery is performed under local anesthesia on an outpatient basis. Following surgery, you must be in a face-down position normally for a day or two, but at times for as long as two to three weeks. This position lets the bubble press against the macula and is slowly reabsorbed by the eye, sealing the hole. As the bubble is reabsorbed, the vitreous cavity refills with natural eye fluids. Maintaining a face-down position is important for successful surgery. Because this position is complex for a lot of people, it's crucial to talk this out with your doctor before surgery. The most common danger following macular hole surgery is an increase in the rate of cataract development. In many patients, a cataract can progress quickly and at times becomes complex enough to need removal. Other less common risks include infection and retinal detachment either during surgery or after the surgery both of which can be treated immediately. For some months after surgery, you are not allowed to travel by air. Changes in air pressure can trigger expansion of the bubble in the eye, which will increase the pressure inside the eye. 
Thank you for your time. If the knowledge provided in these videos enriched and formed the basis for the recovery of your joy, well-being, and quality of life, we have reached our humble goal to help as many human beings in the fight against disease and in the recovery of health and life expectancy. This is the light and the force that guides us. Whoever saves a life saves the whole world. I present Miranda, part of our team, who will explain our treatment program for Macular Whole. See you soon, and thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Ricardo Kotleroff, for your excellent explanations of this terrible disease that affects millions of people all over the world. When we began, Dr. Kotleroff was able to treat persons with diseases by using acupuncture, which had amazing results. However, there was a problem. Only those who lived close to the clinic at the time were able to be part of these fantastic treatments. Patients from all over began to hear of Dr. Kotleroff's success and wanted to experience these results themselves. They asked that more clinics be opened in other locations, but this unfortunately wasn't possible. So to solve this problem, Dr. Kotleroff began to develop homeopathy-based remedies that were based on acupuncture's principles and went on to make these treatments available worldwide. Since then, Premulife's remedies can help patients in any part of the world. These remedies can be ordered online and are then delivered right to the patient's home. Our treatment method allows us to prepare our remedy based on the diagnosis that we receive, which means that once you have been professionally diagnosed, you can then order our treatment based on the illness that you are diagnosed with. Now, I'd like to invite you personally to be part of Premulife's success and join all the thousands of patients worldwide who are already finding great improvement in their condition using our remedies. Our reason for doing this is very simple. When we cure someone and we see their relief and joy when they realize that their symptoms have been ended or slowed, we feel good inside. We feel proud satisfied and happy for them, genuinely happy. You may know this saying, the two most important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you find out why. Every person has a purpose in life, whether it's teaching, leading, or empowering. I believe that our purpose here at Premi Life is to help people get over their illnesses, letting them lead healthy, long, and comfortable lives. Premi Life wants to be your partner in managing your diseases. Since our founding in 1980, Premi Life has dedicated decades to helping patients throughout the world experience gradual improvement of diseases via homeopathy. Our homeopathic treatments are manufactured under strict quality guidelines for healthcare from the World Health Organization. Premi Life's unique homeopathic treatment is specifically designed and formulated to assist you in managing your disease. The different ingredients in each pill increase your likelihood of success. You can take our homeopathic medicine with any conventional medicine that you might be using. By ordering through Premi Life, you get consistently high quality homeopathic treatments based on the latest advancements in our field, natural remedies, unique and proprietary formulas, and direct, hands-on experience treating patients the world over since 1980. Now that you understand what our treatments are and what they can do for you, I want to answer a common question. Is there any recommended time period for treatment? We strongly recommend that patients commit to a program of at least six months, although longer programs, 12 to 24 months, may even offer greater effectiveness. The duration patients participate in our program often will depend on the severity of the patient's illness and the improvements that are realized. Premi Life continually monitors each patient's progress and will optimize his or her treatment protocol as needed. If you are interested, I would like to ask you to click the button located under this video and join thousands of satisfied customers who are grateful each day for choosing the Premi Life treatment and have embarked on a new life. I will be very happy if you give us a chance to help you too. 
it's time to do something for yourself so you can do more and be more for the people and family you love. You deserve this, and so do they. Let's get started right now. Don't let this become a secondary priority. Just click the Get Started button and you'll be on your way to enjoying a happier and healthier life. Click that button now and order the homeopathic treatment. If this video has enlightened you, don't forget to share it with your friends. I want to thank you viewers for taking your time to watch this video. I hope you enjoyed it.